Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be putting the new bench in the greenhouse and I've got to build a shelf for in the plant room. The bench in the plant room here that I have my Schaeflera on has a spot for a shelf below so I can put some trees on there and that will help me clean up a bit of room on the floor. The uh, sun in the winter time is very low on the horizon so it actually will light up this shelf down here. It even lights up the floor in this back corner. So anything too high up in the room doesn't get any sunlight. It's mainly down low in the midwinter. So I'm going to get a piece of plywood. I'll cut it out so it fits in there. That'll be one thing I've got to do today. Also yesterday on the way to Hamilton, I picked up that end bench for the glass greenhouse. So today I'm going to install that also. Let's go outside and have a look at that. I was out trying to fit the bench in place in the greenhouse earlier this morning and I found a few problems. When I put the two side benches in, I didn't really worry about them both being exactly the same height. But now it's critical because when I put this end bench across, if I don't have them the same height, it means that end bench will be on a, a bit of a slope and it looks kind of funny. So what I'm going to have to do is take everything out of the greenhouse. There's not all that much in here all the plants I'll put them on the bench and then set the bench height so they're exactly the same height at the end here so when I put that end bench in it'll sit nice and level the other problem I might have is the width of this new bench I just tried it out quickly and it seems to be just a little bit too long to fit between my two existing benches so I may have to take one of the end caps off here and just shorten it slightly so it fits in between the other branches perfectly. I'm going to start with the easier job fitting that plywood shelf underneath the bench in the plant room. All right, I'm going to get the shelf measured up. So it is 18 inches by 31 inches. So I'll write that down, 18 by 31. I'll go look for some used plywood to put in here. I've got this piece of plywood that used to be on the old plant room roof. It doesn't look very good, but it'll do. I'll clean it up. I'll pull all the old nails out and get it ready for cutting up. It's the right size anyway. All right, I've got a lot of nails to get out here. Don't hit your thumb. Ah, that come up pretty easily. Sure is nice to be able to reuse materials. So you're not cutting down trees to make more wood. Especially for things like shelves and that, which, you know, it doesn't have to look really finished or anything. I'll probably put plastic over top of it anyway. You don't want to cut through a nail with the saw. One here. Okay. So that's got the plywood clean with nails. Next, I gotta scrape that styrofoam off it, or that foam. Just like that. little bit of garbage okay now I can lay out the dimensions of the shelf on the board here this board is a little warped but once the weight of the pots gets on top of it it'll flatten it out nicely I'm checking with the framer square to see if I have one good corner here it looks like I do so this is a 90 degree corner so I can measure everything off of this corner. So here I go. Got my dimensions, 31 by 18, so I'll come across 31 here. So I can draw a line up from here. And then I need to measure up 18 just a little bit short of 18. 
So right to about here. I don't want it fitting too tightly, otherwise it'll bind and I'll have to file the edges off or something like that. Right there. And that's my cut line. So that piece fits nicely in here. Just fits. All right, it's time to cut out the wood now. Ear protection on. All right, here we go. That looks pretty good. I'll just file off any sharp edges from the saw. And now the big question is, will it fit? Did I make it the right size? Let's go inside and see. All right, here I go, the trial fitting of the shelf. Let's see if I can get it in. I don't even know how to do this. Like that, I guess. Ah, oh, it fits perfect. It's just a little bit warped, but... So I wanna put some plastic on top just so the wood doesn't rot out from the moisture of, you know, when it comes out the bottom of the pot. So I'll probably get some of that. I've been reusing this, uh, that aluminized bubble wrap that I had, you know, on all the walls in the old plant room. I've been reusing that, trying to use it up. Uh, so I'll cut out a piece that fits along the bottom of the shelf here and then, then I can put some trees on here. I've cut out the piece of plastic. Let's see if that fits in there now. Ah, that's pretty good. Nice snug fit. Okay, I can put some trees on top now. I think I'll put the uh, Chinese City Penjing down there. It's quite large up here, and it's it's not very high, so it'll fit in there nicely. So there, I've got the Schaeffler on top, and down below, the City Penjing. Now, some of the plants that are on the floor can come up here. Well, that's kind of nice. That one needs weeding. That's about all I can fit up there, I think. Maybe my new Fuki and T can go up there. That's got a lot of the floor space cleaned up. So I just have the plants down here now that are on the floor still. I'm going to put the bald cypress down here. The water naturally collects in the corner of the boot tray there and bald cypress need a lot of water so it should be quite happy in that corner there. I have got the floor space cleaned up in the plant room. It's so nice I can walk right to the end now, inspect the trees, check out the ficus, the auction ficus, how much foliage has grown in on that back branch now. Just incredible. It's doing really well, looking good. I still have a couple of trees down here that are sort of on the floor. Uh, so I still have to find homes for those. But uh, they're kind of out of the way. So at least, you know, I could come in here and make a video. I can get to all my plants and water them. I did notice my Brazilian rain tree. The leaves were going yellow on it. And I thought, oh no, <laughs> that's not good. But then I noticed at the base of each leaf is a nice kind of fat bud that looks like it's going to come out soon. So that's often a sign, like my bougainvillea, bougainvilleas, when I bring them in, they lose all their leaves. They kind of go yellowish and fall off. And then it has an explosion of growth. So I'm hoping the same thing happens for the rain tree. The hibiscus flower is looking good still for day two. Beautiful flower. The second flower is coming, you can see it here. The bud is getting fatter. There's another one just showing a bit of color on it back here. The very tip of it. And there's one, two, three buds over there. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. There's only one plug in this room. So what I'll have to do for the lights is I'll have to set up all my lights on the back wall here and then I'll alternate them. So one day I'll plug in the one light, the next day 
a plug in light number two, the third day light number three, and I'll just keep rotating around the lights. That way each tree in the plant room will get at least one good day out of three days, a really solid, nice light. Right now I just have Connor's UFO light plugged in back here. So eventually I'll have to put a, you know, a light here, one up here, and then I can, you know, give all these trees at the back some light. When the sun's shining through the windows, they get light. It's just on cloudy days like this. You know, the ones near the front of the window get some natural light, but not a whole lot, but enough. But the ones at the back don't get enough light. So they, they need some artificial lighting to help them out. I'll head back outside now and continue the work on the end bench of the greenhouse. I'm back outside in the glass greenhouse. I still have a lot of tropical trees out here and tonight it's going to three degrees below freezing. So I've got to move them out of the greenhouse to work on the benches and I'll have to get them back inside before it gets too cold out or they'll freeze. I think what I'm going to do is I'll put the heat on in the plastic greenhouse over there. I'll move all the trees from the glass greenhouse into the plastic greenhouse because it's quite cold outside. It's only a couple of degrees above freezing and they're kind of used to, well, it's about 10 or 12 degrees in here right now. So that would be really chilling them down and <laughs> I don't think they'd like it. So into the plastic greenhouse they go. I can't put the acorns I planted in the plastic greenhouse because as Tom says, the night terrors will come out and steal them. Um, I've had some damage in that greenhouse before on my Christmas cactus. Uh, a mouse or something came in and chewed part of the trunk. That was too bad. Um, usually they don't, they don't do anything. It's, you know, I've had my plants in there all summer and had no problems, but definitely the acorns can't go in there. I've got all the trees moved out of the glass greenhouse here. So let's go into the poly house and have a look at it. There's a look at the larch forest today. You see a few of the needles are dropping. The leaves are going a very pale, pale color now. Or the needles. Yeah, it's looking pretty cool. I saw a lot of larches yesterday in forest about the same color as these. They sure stand out in winter. Okay, into the poly house we go here. Here we are. So I've got everything kind of positioned away from the plastic walls because that'll be the coldest. So this will help kind of keep them warm, keeping them in the middle of the room. And so they go all the way around. I got the heater running. I got my water, watering cans in here. The trees should be happy in here, at least for a couple of days until I get the bench done in the glass greenhouse. My baobab trees that are in the plant room are starting to lose their leaves. They're kind of going yellow and falling off, at least the lower ones. And I've always wanted to try tasting one of the leaves to see what they taste like, because you can, you can eat them. They're all parts of the baobab are edible. Um, so that you can either like cook them like spinach in whatever you're making. You can put them, eat them raw in a salad, or you can dry them out, crush them into a powder, and then it's added to soup as a thickening, a thickening agent. So there's a lot of uses for the baobab leaves. So before they all, you know, turn yellow and fall off, I'm gonna go into the plant room and try a leaf. All right, here is my baobab, the tallest one. So the leaves are going yellow quite quickly. Yesterday, I don't think these upper ones were yellow like that. So they're all going yellow. It's going dormant for the year, which means you don't water them at all until springtime when you start to see the new shoots coming out. Then you slowly increase the watering. So I'm going to eat one of these leaves. I don't know what they'll taste like. Um, probably leafy. Here I go, I'll snip one off. The first time I've ever eaten a baobab leaf in my life. Here I go. It's actually quite a nice taste. Definitely has a leafy taste to it, but it also has a bit of a nutty taste. Yeah. Um, I 
trying to think what flavor it's similar to. Um, there is a taste I recognize. Let me try another one. I'm trying to think. It, it's maybe celery. It, they're good tasting. That's for sure. I can see why you'd like them in a salad. Yeah. You know, as far as leaves go, these are pretty good tasting leaves. I can't stop eating them. <laughs> Yeah, I like the flavor. That's awesome. I like trying new th new flavors and new things. Cool. Well, you know, maybe someday I'll look forward to leaf pruning this entire tree. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. I like it. Yeah, it has almost like a nutty taste to it, like cashews or something. Yeah, really good. Okay. I've done it. I've tried a baobab leaf. By the way, this week, the Safety Zorb, there's an online special. You can get a bag of it for, I think it's $15.88 or somewhere around there, $15 something. That's pretty good because normally I pay kind of around $19 per bag. So I'm off. I'm going to get two more bags. Take advantage of the sale. I'm also going to have to move all that soil out of here so I can get underneath the benches to adjust them. So it'll all have to go into the plastic greenhouse too. Almost done. I got one more bag here. And that's short light. That's kind of light. I have a box in the greenhouse that I throw all my clippings in and, you know, any organic matter so it doesn't contaminate the gravel on the floor. And I was throwing that out, uh, putting it underneath the uh, cedar hedge there to compost and become soil. And I was tipping out the aloe, the leaves I cut off, and I noticed that around all the cuts, they'd kind of turned a blood red color. Kind of strange, like a purpley reddish color. Kind of spooky. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen that before. You see how black they are on the ends? And that's, you know, it's not rot or anything. That's just the way the sap or the aloe gel turned a different color. Kind of cool. Thought I'd show you that. The greenhouse is all cleaned out now. Except for my seeds over there, my acorns. And I've got some tulip trees planted there too. Yeah, it's all empty in here. So it's starting to rain quite hard out now. So I think I'm going to go up and get the uh, safety zorb. And I think by the time I get back, it'll be dark out. I'll be happy when I get all this running around, moving things, moving plants and setting up benches all done and I can settle down in the plant room and work on the bonsai. That'll be really fun over the winter. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.